Hello. <clears throat> I'm Eric. We're trying this again. This is like take three or something like that. Not that you needed to know that. I did 11 years in prison. I talk about prison experiences. That's what I do. You're on the channel. Welcome. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you to anyone who's not a subscriber and who is watching anyway. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate the support. And please like and subscribe. At least consider it. It tells the YouTube algorithm that this is relevant content and it pushes it out to more people. Which I think is important because a lot of shady stuff happens in prison that the general public would benefit from knowing if they give... If they care. Okay. So. Now, <clears throat> in this episode, I am going to be talk. Nah, I can't talk. But what the hell am I talking about? In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how you can avoid being a punk in prison. What is a punk? Mm, it's not a good thing. So, a punk... Put on my smart glasses. They're not smart glasses. They just make me look smart. Um, a punk is someone's sexual property. Mm, yeah, it sounds like a bad thing. It is a bad thing. So basically, if you are a punk, you are a sex slave. Not good. A friend of mine, Mark, suggested this video to me. He was act it wasn't so much a suggestion. He asked me about it. He said, how could I avoid becoming someone's bitch in prison? Bitch and a punk aren't exactly the same. Sometimes they're referred to in the same way, but they don't necessarily mean the same thing. A bitch can just be somebody who doesn't stick up for themselves. Someone, it doesn't necessarily mean somebody who's sexual property. It generally just means somebody who doesn't stick up for themselves. It can mean punk. It doesn't always, at least in the Kansas prison system. A punk, on the other hand, if you're calling someone a punk, you're referring to somebody who is somebody else's sexual property or somebody who dresses up like a girl. Um, however, oftentimes people who are um, cross-dressers in prison, I, and I apologize ahead of time if any of this is the incorrect term. I know we live in a very politically correct age. I'm not here to offend anybody. I'm here to inform. Now, People who are homosexual in prison don't really have it easy because a lot of times people assume that if an individual is homosexual that they just want it. You know, they don't they don't get the opportunity to, to say no or to not, to deny people. So it's not necessarily a good thing to be a homosexual. So if, you know, you see someone who's a cross dresser or something like that, just because they're willingly dressing up like a girl, it might not mean they want to. Sometimes whoever owns that person will make them do that. So, now, it's not always like that. There's some people who are homosexuals in prison and they're perfectly happy and they dress like girls. And or there are people who are transgender in prison. There is that as well. So... And I, I make the distinction between transgender and somebody who dresses like a girl because there's people who, you know, call themselves guys and they dress like girls. And then there's guys that, oh man, this is a deep rabbit hole. Then there's people who identify as a female, okay? So don't, don't get mad at me for using an incorrect term. I'm sorry. Now, words to live by. <clears throat> How to avoid being someone's punk. Ugh. Well, for one, you need to stand up for yourself. You need to avoid looking naive, <clears throat> weak, or in a vulnerable position. So... If you're coming into the system and you're young, like I was, I was 17 years old when I was arrested, 
17 years old when I went to prison. And I ended up in El Dorado. I was in Ellsworth at first, but I ended up in El Dorado. There were a lot of booty bandits in El Dorado. A booty bandit is somebody who um, forces someone into a sexual relationship or a sexual encounter of some sort. Or a booty bandit uses manipulation to force a sexual relationship. Booty bandits are no good. And they usually manipulate through intimidation or some sort of tactic like that. So, if you're young, like I was, and you don't know anybody, that's that's two things against you already. You're young, you're naive. People will see that and they think, oh, I can get over on this guy. I can manipulate him, I can intimidate him, whatever. So, first thing, if you can make yourself look older, do so. For me, I look older with long hair and a beard. If I cut my hair, shave my beard, I look like I'm 12. Yeah, crazy. However, there are other things you can do, so you need to make yourself look older. You don't want to look naive. If you don't know what you're doing, pretend that you do. Or at least hang out with guys that know what they're doing. But you got to pick and choose. You got to find people that are somewhat solid, people that aren't going to take advantage of you. And that can be hard to do because everybody, even the sharks, act like they want to be your friend. They call it a buddy hustle. Guys will act like they're your friend just so they can stab you in the back, literally or metaphorically. Think about that. So, you got to be careful. You got to kind of sit back, watch people. You know, don't. Don't just rush to be friendly with anybody. If you don't know them, don't get in a hurry to know them. You know, ask around. Ask your cellie. Usually cellies can be a really good source of information. You want to know what a guy's about? Ask someone who's been there for a while. Generally, they can point you in the right direction. Or ask multiple people. That is what I would suggest. Find out what a person's about. Then, if you know what they're about... If you know somebody's a predator, don't hang out with them. Don't get in debt to them. Don't get in debt to anybody. If you end up in debt, a lot of times someone will come to you and be like, Hey, you know, if you can't pay me this, you know, one way, you're going to have to pay for it another. And before you know it, you're a punk. So don't get in debt. Don't look naive. Feel people out. Understand the situation. Practice situational awareness. Don't get caught off guard. Be hyper vigilant. These are all really important in a prison environment. So if you're in the shower, you're, you know, washing up, doing your thing, and someone comes in the shower and you know they're a booty bandit, or even if you have a feeling about them, like if you go to the shower, and every time you go to the shower, this other dude that you don't know decides that it's time for him to take a shower. Like whenever you're in the shower, this guy feels the need to go to the shower. That's a warning sign. Especially if he's watching you while you're showering. That's not cool. And that does happen. Next one, stick up for yourself. Nowadays, well, it might not even be nowadays. I didn't do prison time back in the 70s and 80s, so I can't tell you about that. But nowadays, predators are going to go after an easy target. If they think that they're going to have to fight you and you're going to put up a good fight, if they think that you might stab them, chances are they're not going to try anything. So, it's good to stand up for yourself. And if you stand up for yourself, you're going to win the respect of others. If you win the respect of others, people are not going to allow you to get boogered. So, those are all important steps. You need to be assertive, too. You can't look like some passive guy who's just going to go along with something if somebody applies a little bit of pressure. And it doesn't 
just apply to that, that sort of scenario. You always need to be assertive in prison. Almost to the point that you're kind of abrasive. People used to think that I was a dick, but guess what? I didn't get boogered. You know, someone came up to me and I didn't know them. And they were like, hey, aren't you Eric or aren't you so-and-so? Turn around and say, who the fuck are you? Yeah, that would probably start an argument. Sometimes it would start a fight. But guess what? They ain't going to get one over on you. They're not going to think that you're some weak guy. They're gonna, you're going to come out of the hole and people are going to be like, mm, kind of steer clear from that guy. You know, that dude started a fight with dude just for asking who he was. You know, just leave that guy alone. It is better for people to avoid you because they think that you're a hothead. That they think that you're kind of off kilter, a little bit crazy. It's better for people to think that about you than for people to see you as an easy target. To see you as prey. It's not good when somebody looks at you and says, hmm, this guy's kind of young, looks weak, he doesn't stand up for himself. I'm going to take advantage of him. And it's not just the booty bandits. Anybody will take advantage of you if you look like a easy target. Guys who do loans, guys who extort people, guys who are recruiting for gangs... If you look weak, if you look like a easy target, someone's going to pull up on you. Someone's going to, you know, pop up at your cell. They're going to be like, hey, what you doing? What are you in for? What's up? You know, I want you to come to the come to the weight pit. You know, some of the boys want to meet, meet you, whatever. Or it could be, hey, man, why don't you come down and play cards with me? You know, I see you in your cell a lot. You don't hang out with anybody. I just want to be your friend. Next thing you know, that guy who just wants to be your friend takes you down to the card table Gets you in debt because he has you betting on a poker game. Next thing you know, you're in debt to a booty bandit. That's not a good scenario. Not at all. And, you know, that can lead to you becoming a punk. It's all about being strong. It's all about not being weak, not being naive, and standing up for yourself. Being assertive. You also need to carry yourself a certain way. You know, if you speak to others and treat others with respect, you have integrity, you're not a rat, you don't have a sex case, you pay your debts, you carry yourself like that, and people will have respect for you. If people have respect for you, they're not just going to let some dude run up on you, try to rape you or something like that. And that, you know, that scenario happens in prison. I'm not saying it's like what you see in a lot of movies, you know, where you drop the soap and... No, it doesn't go down like that. Matter of fact, funny story. When I first went to prison, I was in Ellsworth. And I was in the day room. And the prison is... The shower is just off the day room. Day room is an area where everybody congregates. They play cards. They watch TV. Shower is right there off the day room. There's nothing separating the day room from the shower. It's just like an open room with some shower heads in it. You can see right into the shower. You can walk from the shower to the day room. There's not really a door between the shower and the day room. I was 165 pounds, 17 years old. And I'm standing between these two massive dudes. I don't know them. I don't know anybody. I've heard stories. And sure as shit, that soap is a slippery dude. Soap slipped out of my hand. Fell to the floor. Everything stopped. The dudes who were standing to either side of me stopped mid-wash looked over at me I looked right I looked left I turned around I kicked that bar of soap right out of the shower into the day room I walked into the day room butt naked picked my soap up and walked back to the shower when I got to the shower they started laughing they said man 
it ain't that serious. It's not like what you see in the movies, man. You could have picked up your soap. You're all right. So, while it might not be exactly like what you see in some movies, it is serious. You got to be careful in there. You have to assert yourself. You have to protect yourself. You have to be careful about who you hang around with. You have to carry yourself a certain way. So, yeah, you need to do that. However, certain movies get it right. Shawshank Redemption, watch that. The main character gets raped in prison multiple times. And that's kind of how it goes down. He was off by himself in a laundry room somewhere. Some dudes jumped him, raped him. That's how it usually happens in prison. You're off somewhere by yourself. You don't have any of your homeboys around. And some dude thinks that you're soft. And so he tries to take advantage of you. That's how it happens. So avoid situations like that. There was a time I was working in the infirmary. I was in all sorts of rooms by myself. No one else. No one else there. And then a no notorious booty bandit came to work back there on the floors. And it was a dude who was always eyeballing me. And finally, I cussed his ass out. I told him that if he got near me, I was going to stab him. That I didn't tolerate disrespect. And then... I refused to be over at the clinic while he was over there. I wasn't going to put myself in that position. I wasn't going to make myself vulnerable. I didn't get boogered. So, that's how you avoid being a punk in prison. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, like, subscribe if you want to. I would appreciate it. it tells YouTube this is relevant. I'm Eric. This is From Prison to the Streets. Catch you all later. Right.